afternoon. It's like lunchtime and I need to eat. And um, yeah, anyway, um, I did not rewatch Thousand Pound Sisters because I was just getting engrossed in um, court TV. <laughs> <laughs> I was... Um, so there's this case out of Boston. Well, it's out of the Massachusetts area. Um, and you and I have talked about it very briefly offline. Um, this woman, Karen Reed, was arrested for the death of her boyfriend. But there's all these allegations of like cover-ups and poli police cover-ups and stuff, which I mean, come on, it's Boston. So it's like bo police cover-up is kind of like the norm there. Mm. <laughs> um, and... Um, so there was a hearing this morning, I guess. And so I was I was watching it. But you and I are, are sort of aware of this case um, because um, I, my friend Kim, who lives in that area, is very highly involved in it. And she's actually going to come on the show and we're going to talk about that case. Nice. Um, you and I have talked. I, I We've talked about this briefly, but there's this. Yeah, it's this case. It, it, John O'Keefe is the guy who got uh, murdered. And the allegation is that, like, these two were out drinking at a bar with a bunch of friends, and then they went to this house party, and then he got out of the car to go, like, check at the house party to see if they're really invited, and then he turns up dead. And I'm not sure of all the details. And the allegation is that she, like, ran him over with her car, and um, the the evidence and a lot of the stuff doesn't actually match up to that. There's a lot of things. I, I don't know all the details. Um, There's a lot of, like internet sleuths that are like deal that are talking about it which i have a i have a whole problem with internet sleuths like i can't get involved in that because of my i have issues with people and not dealing with like real evidence and a lot of those internet sleuth facebook groups like don't deal with real evidence <laughs> and they're like mm. well, what about this and the moon was this and this and this and i as I like, I deal. My job requires me to deal with actual facts and evidence, like that are been established, like conjecture and stuff like that. Is just really hard for me to, like, be involved in, um, on on that level, um, from a criminal standpoint, and especially because I don't investigate crimes, right? Like, I like it's mm -hmm. all it's all very weird. I'm like, I know that's not a fact. I know that's not evidence, but like, where is the real evidence? I need the real evidence in front of me. Um. Anyway, so my friend Kim is going to come on and she's been very highly involved in the case locally. So, um, she's going to come on. We're going to talk about this case. It's getting, so a is the, is the girlfriend on trial right now or yes. Okay. Yes. That's yeah. Well, the trial isn't happening right now. There were some hearings about some other stuff, but you know, she was, she's been arrested for it. There's stuff like there's a, like the, the, the allegation is that like the house party was other cops or something like that. And they, there's like a Google search of somebody that was in the house going like, how long does it take to die in the cold at oh. like, at like two 30 in the morning, which is about the time that he died Interesting. and stuff. And there's like um, wounds on him that are, cons that seem consistent with like dog bite wounds versus like, that doesn't look like a road rash wound. Like, like she dragged him or with a car or something like that. So I, I've, I've been watching the case sort of tangentially, just sort of like from afar. But then I saw this thing on court TV um, this morning about it. So I got engrossed in watching that and because it was a live hearing of something that was going on. Um, uh -huh. And so I got very involved in watching that <laughs> and uh, texting with uh, with Kim about trying to schedule when we're going to we're going to do that. Um Anyway, so that's what I got involved in. Um, and I, I ended up not re-watching Sisters. Um, but <laughs> I have watched I'm Thousand have to look Sisters. It. And oh my God. So here we are. We're talking about Thousand yes. Sisters for Fat Friday. Well, you didn't miss much like in the rewatch, I don't think. Not a lot of crazy details this time around. No, there wasn't as much in this one, but there's there's still been a lot going on. Mm -hmm. So a lot um, more in the <laughs> And in the past, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Like w episodes were like, oh, you know, like we're flashing back and forth between the rehab and home and and they're like making barbecues. Like, that's it. Like, that's all <laughs> that we had before. And now we have all this breaking generational trauma happening. <laughs> right. Yeah. So well, we're we go. talking go. today, season five, episode four, The Grapes of Wrath previously we see amy and michael fighting michael controlling amy withholding her debit card uh, and then amy finally deciding to leave the house 
afterward, we, we see the family at the gym with trash bags on, just trying to sweat out the nicotine. Uh, and then Caleb reveals to Tammy his current weight and how he gained 37 pounds while he was in rehab. Uh, Do so, we know what time period that was? Like how long his weight? Do oh, we remember from the episode? It was it was either one or two months. Okay. I can't remember if it was one, but it was a very short period of time. All right. That he gained right. the 37. Been there, done that. But yeah. <laughs> I gained 10 pounds over the holiday. So um, I know, right? like I well, haven't weighed myself, but I know, you know, recently, but I know that I'm quite capable. Well, in my defense, weight gain. <laughs> I will say my defense, I went to my OBGYN and you know, when you're about to get your period, I don't care if I'm talking about this because women know and you retain water. Please, I was talking about my stress incontinence and peeing my pants last <laughs> couple weeks ago. Come on now. <laughs> Yeah, I know yeah. you're a little bit more chaste than I am, but <laughs> yeah. well, I was like, um, I really usually gain like five or six pounds going into my my period, the start of my cycle. So I of course like I go in lot. like two day, huh? I feel like that's a lot of weight to gain in like a week. That's a maybe, lot but I also have extremely heavy periods, so I don't know. You have if a like, whole fucked up situation, yeah, exactly. With so, that, like, you have like serious medical problems going on beyond <laughs> exactly. normal period. Right, right. So like, um, and then it's funny, as soon as it starts, it's like, everything comes off. But um, anywho, yeah, so I was like, oh my god, plus like six pounds, probably five or six pounds. you lose that five pounds of like blood in, in your period yeah. blood because you in like a day <laughs> of such heavy periods yeah exactly uh, uh, but yeah for, so but 37 pounds i mean he's not active things like that so of course if you're eating and not moving your body you know you're gonna gain weight 37 in a row that's a lot sorry that yeah. was a, that's a line from um uh clerks Oh my god, I haven't seen that movie in so Kevin long. That's Smith. such a good movie. Yeah, That's Clerks, one of the, best the original Clerk. Yeah. There's a there's a line where it talks about he she sucked 37 dicks and the, <laughs> the response was in a row. <laughs> oh my god. So, so every time the word third or the number 37 just comes up in the world, how do a life mate and I are always like in a row? <laughs> oh man, now that's gonna be there in my head for the rest of my life. I will never every forget time you that. hear 37. In a row, Kaya, Kaya's learning how to count to 50. Now, every time I count to 37, I'm going to be thinking about you clerks. 37 in a row. <laughs> Try not to suck any dicks on the way to the parking lot. Oh, my God. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, the episode starts off with the family going out to a brunch to celebrate Misty and Amanda's big news that they're finally approved for surgery with Dr. Smith because they tested negative on their nicotine screen. Woo-hoo. This brunch. Yeah, this brunch looked legit. (laughs) Oh, my God. Okay, but the brunch looked okay. Okay, but then was it, what's her name? Misty ordered the Uh tomahawk steak, which, first of all, you're ordering a tomahawk steak at a place that looks like a diner, but okay. I mean, we're in the middle of Kentucky. I'll (laughs) give it. It's not a steakhouse. I'm not not ordering tomahawk steaks from a place that has plastic chairs, but okay. You know, Um, she ordered the best damn steak steak you've ever had in your life in Kentucky. It was the size of Kentucky. This platter of the way the steak and the fries and the presentation and all that stuff. I get it. She wanted the protein. Like I was actually like I got a steak bowl from Chipotle yesterday because I too was craving protein. Um, But I didn't even eat half of it. (laughs) Much like a Chipotle bowl, right? Like not this whole plate. (laughs) I don't even eat meat, but I was like, hot damn, look at that. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, God. like, did you find it disgusting? Because it's like that much like meat that she ordered. Kind of. Super rare. So it's like, uh, I mean, I used to, I mean, I used to eat my steak medium rare. So I mean, I could I could almost taste it, to be honest. And it's been since 2016 since I haven't had a piece of meat. So I don't know. Yeah, but you've had a piece of meat since then. <laughs> I mean, hi, Kaya just turned three. (laughs) That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying is we have the proof is that Kaya just turned three on New Year's Day. Happy birthday, Kaya. Happy (laughs) birthday to my baby. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, So Chris is saying it's the last supper of the fat family. And they were talking about no acetal syndrome. And I suffer from no acetal syndrome. Yes, I I, um, I'm very familiar with this where you want to take your belly fat and put it on your ass fat because you don't yep. have an ass. I'm familiar with that. <laughs> yep. I'm very familiar. Uh-huh. Um, 
Amanda is worried about the risk of surgery and who would take care of her kids. So she's verbalizing that at the table. All um, the and they're all, concerns. yeah, yeah. And because Amanda and Misty are going to do it at the same time well, on the same day, back to back. Um, and so now Misty actually has a lot of health issues. Like her diabetes is uncontrolled. So they're, you know, worried about well, that as well. I mean, she's clearly not leading a super healthy lifestyle. So with the smoking and eating the tomahawk steaks and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, she, she seems to have, um, yeah, some health issues that maybe, um, Amanda doesn't have. Right. But it also makes me wonder because we've constantly been wondering what else Chris has going on. Cause he's clearly got some other health issue going on. Cause there's some episodes where he just doesn't look well at all, but they never talk about any of it. Yeah. So I wonder what other stuff he has. Yeah, true. I'm always wondering. Anyway, so yeah, so Misty has has um that yeah, they want to get her in. Um, and then Amy's like upset at dinner or brunch, whatever time of day it is. Um, she's worried, you know, that well, Amanda's all let me remember what Amanda's offering to cancel and reschedule her surgery because Amy needs help. And if both a Amanda and Misty are tied up with, you know, healing and getting better, then they obviously can't help Tammy and Amy out with the kids. So, well, yeah. And Chris is going with them and, and where they're going in, in this Georgetown, Kentucky is, is several hours away from where they actually live in Kentucky. So Chris going with them, they're like traveling to go do all of this. Right. And then he'll come back. So, the, so Chris, Amanda and Misty are going to be gone, leaving Amy and Tammy Neither of whom drive, by the uh -huh. way, to, with the two babies <laughs> at yep. home. Uh-huh. Which I, he later goes on to say, hopefully there are no casualties. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there's that. But Amy's like, no, 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 go. You need to do this. Like, go ahead and do this. So there's that. So they did. Yeah. Which is, which is, I mean, good. I mean, healthy boundaries are important, you know, um, I don't know, like it, like, yeah, you know, so that's ultimately the decision. Amy's like, no, we're going to figure this out. We're going to get this. You you need to go do your thing. Go get your surgery. We're going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And at the table, Amy also mentions to the family that she knows she needs to get a lawyer and file for divorce. Um, So everyone agrees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was weird seeing Amy push Tammy out of the restaurant because we've seen so many years of Michael pushing Tammy and because Amy couldn't do it, Tammy was too yeah. big. And yeah. now Amy's pushing her down the little ramp. And I was like, oh my gosh, look at her go. And and all those years we're all like, oh, Michael's such a good guy. Look at how he's always pushing Tammy around. Well, apparently him pushing Tammy around was the only thing he did because um, and he did it because you know he drove them all around because you know Amy can't drive and he's got these control issues that he has to be with them at all times. So you know, it puts a little bit of a different light on it now that we know Michael's actually a complete trash bag. But mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> he pushed Tammy around more than he pushed his own kids around on the stroller, probably. Seriously, yeah. Oh, well, Amy is semi blind, which is why she can't drive. So right. she runs over some loose bricks with Tammy in the wheelchair, and Tammy starts to lose her shit. And I was like, this is the old Tammy coming back. The old out Tammy, again. exactly. The old <laughs> Tammy's coming back. Oh, God, here it goes. <laughs> Oh, man. She's like yelling in the street, saying she wants to leave. And I was just like, oh, here we go again. Amy's just been beat down like emotionally. And here goes Tammy. And poor Amy literally can't see. Yeah. So it, Tammy goes, you're keeping one eye on Glenn and one eye on Gage. Not because you're cross-eyed, just because you're busy or whatever. <laughs> Later on in her interview. And I was just like, oh, my God. Then I was waiting for Amy to blow up again at her and, like, you know, be upset about the cross-eyed comment. But she didn't. Mm -hmm. She didn't. Yep. Yeah. So. All yeah. right. Well, we're then at the hospital with uh, Chris, Amy, and Misty. And Chris says he's worried about Misty because of her uncontrolled diabetes. And, you know, when you don't have diabetes under control, it's harder to heal. Your yeah. wounds are harder to heal, things like that. So uh, both him and Amanda are worried about her. Yeah, all, all you know, very legit. And and Amanda has had previous weight loss surgery. So her surgery is going to be more complicated because there's going to be scar tissue and it's a revision. So there's all kinds of potential complications for both both of them. And so all these legitimate you know, worries going in. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, they then cut back to Amy and Tammy. Um, and Amy's saying it's like co-parenting with Tammy because she kind of explains her morning routine with mm-hmm. Tammy as like a second parent. And then they decide to go to lunch. And why they chose a Japanese restaurant when Tammy doesn't eat fish and Amy hates sushi is beyond me. But they decide Tammy to go get sushi. Tammy is like, let's go get sushi. But she doesn't like fish. Now, if you like the other stuff, I get it. Because like, I remember being pregnant. When I was pregnant, I was craving sushi. And you know, you're not supposed to eat raw fish while you're pregnant, at least back in the day. I don't know what it is Still now. Still true, yeah, yeah. Back in the day, you're not supposed to eat raw fish. Um, when you were pregnant but I was craving sushi so I would go and I would get like California rolls or cucumber rolls or you know all the other mm-hmm. rolls that didn't have raw fish in them right I mean and my kid came out basically loving sushi from the time he was born so <laughs> yeah I did the same thing I mean I love me a cucumber avocado roll or right avocado. yeah I, like, they're so good yeah and like and I that- just wanted the whole mix of the flavors and the soy sauce and the 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 wasabi sriracha and all- sriracha or whatever yeah. i don't know if you put sriracha in your soy sauce but i do uh wasabi not with sriracha oh i put both in you put sriracha in your sushi mm-hmm. in no your- i put it in the soy sauce yeah oh yeah with the wasabi yeah Holy i like shit. spicy i've yeah. never done th- i've oh, never heard of some- you and i need oh, to go get never- sushi i feel like i need you've to try never this. mix sriracha in this in the bowl of soy sauce no oh this is a great i've been eating sushi like my whole life i love me some sushi and i've never heard this oh you are missing out apparently you let's go get sushi next time like but please I come do. out that way we have to yeah oh man i love some sushi. Um, and let's get uh what's your name quail uh, eggs what i said quail eggs no i'm not <laughs> eating fucking quail eggs they're stupid uh, no, <laughs> I've never had a quail egg. I don't. It looks not appetizing to me. But, you know, <laughs> when I saw Amy gag on, I was like, nope, not for me. No, I mean, I'll eat. I'll eat shit like random shit. I'll try it. I'll be like, who knows? Like, I may like it and stuff. But like the texture of that looked like I couldn't put it in my mouth. And like Amy, I put some things in my mouth. Uh, mm-hmm. maybe questionable in my time <laughs> but i'm just gonna say i don't think i would eat that quail egg yeah yeah mm-hmm. oh. well as they're eating lunch tammy says she misses caleb and his curls and she's worried that he's not losing weight um uh, and so she needs to let out some steam so she told amy that she booked them a rage room to break some shit on purpose much more appropriate than a lunch at sushi with two kids under two who are wild and crazy <laughs> and i'm not saying they're unusually wild and crazy i'm just saying they they're, they're kids they're kids they're they're babies like that's just normal behavior right mm-hmm. <laughs> the, uh, well then a yeah. baby looked like he was like overtired oh my god didn't he didn't you like yes. put that kid down for a nap he's acting so overtired yeah the other day we took kaya to chuck e cheese and she i found out later she didn't nap at daycare so she was in the little car driving and she started nodding off at the, like at chuck e cheese in the little car because she was like overtired you know they start uh-huh. getting fussy and then they start like just yep. wobbling i don't know like yep I, yep i remember it i remember uh-huh uh well then amy starts crying saying she feels bad for the position that she's put tammy in which Tammy's yeah. like, no, I'm here for you. Yeah, and 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 this, I mean, I get, I totally get Amy's position here. She doesn't want to be a burden. She's always been the one taking care of other people. And Tammy is like, basically like, you know, you took care of me for so many years. Like, I'm here to take care of you. Like, let me be your co-parent. Mm-hmm. Um, and Amy's having a hard time accepting that. And I get it, you know. Right. There's, you know, it's hard. To, we do things for other people. Definitely. Hard to have them for us. And then back at the hospital, Chris is speaking with Amanda and well, Amanda's in pre-op and she said she's nervous and she wants to make sure that Misty is okay before she gets put under. Um, And she's so worried about her having complications. And then her and Chris kind of bicker a little bit because Chris is trying to support her. But you know, when you're in a bad mood and you're really anxious, no matter what anybody says, you're probably going to not not going to work. Yeah. Right. (laughs) <laughs> you're just nope <laughs> i'm a shit mood and, and no one's gonna change that mm-hmm. uh so then we cut back to the restaurant and tammy said her niece and nephew dropped them off since they both can't drive and that's when they ordered the quail eggs 
And then Tammy orders an entire sushi boat, even though she doesn't like fish. There I, begins. Like, I get it for the point of trying, like you're, you're especially sushi and you could you need to go with someone who knows what they're doing with sushi so that they can tell you what you may like when not like you're not gonna like this and this has a weird texture like don't jump into like don't go from eating like a california roll to a quail egg like there's yeah. an in between like <laughs> like there's a there's a there's a variety in between that you don't have to jump straight there you know like oh maybe go with some some eel because that's cooked and it's got a little sweet sauce on it like like some shrimp tempura (laughs) yeah (laughs) like there's ways to elevate someone's sushi game so they can learn to like new things you know or taste it and try it and understand what it is and be like okay it's okay if you don't like it just try it you don't like it okay spit it out you know i think if i were to take somebody to a sushi restaurant and they had never had it before I probably be like, if you're open to it, I'm just not going to tell you what each thing is because I think if you get yeah. if you get in your head and be like, this is yeah. eel, then I people took, are going to freak out. I took um, baby step fraud into sushi God, a number of years ago because she's like, I don't like fish, I don't like fish, whatever. And I'm like, okay, but you know, you're really little. I mean, she's 14 now, so she was, I don't know, she's probably like 10 or something when this was, or younger when this was going on. So I took her to sushi and I was like, okay. I'm going to, you know, here's some different things. And I got, I, you know, here's some miso soup. She loves miso soup. Okay. Start so there, good. you know, right. And then, okay, well, I'm going to get some cucumber rolls. Okay. Like try this. She loves seaweed. You know, let's try this combination. You don't like that combination. Oh, oh, you like this. You don't like that. You know, teaching her that kind of stuff. And she was very willing to try all this stuff. And she knew she could spit it out if she didn't like it. Like mm-hmm. if the texture was too weird or something, you know what I mean? So she was like in a quote unquote safe place to quote, mm-hmm. quote, it's safe. <laughs> um, yeah. And so like to order a whole sushi boat when none of you like sushi and none of you like fish, like it was just not a good idea. Like, I don't know what kind of, if this was producer shenanigans. Of like, course it was. Because like, it just seemed so ridiculous. And like, they didn't have like an iPad or anything for like the kids, you know, to entertain them and I don't like the whole thing was just very poorly planned and done. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, and Tammy Gage is starting to have his semi meltdown and he wants to run around like every toddler does. They don't want to sit still. Mm-hmm. And Tammy says her end goal is to be able to run after the kids. And I'm like, that's actually a pretty good goal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You just want to be able to be a parent to the kids. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, and then I felt this in my soul when Amy starts trying to reason with Gage, like, please sit down, <laughs> like, please. Just and like... Gage is like throwing himself backwards. And I'm like, oh, God, that's Kaya. I've been yes. there with Kaya <laughs> at a restaurant. Yes. <laughs> She's throwing herself um, around. Last week, I was at Walmart getting something. I haven't been to Walmart forever. And I, I went to, oh, it was um some toys. Anyways, I was in the car and Kaya was fighting me in the car seat. She did not want to get in the car seat. I was like, Kaya, please. Please just get into the car seat. Come on. And I, I negotiated with her. I was like, I'll I'll give you, I'll put on Gracie's Corner music if you get in your car seat. And like the, this mom was walking by and she heard me pleading with Kaya. She's like, good luck. Good luck with that with the toddler. I was like, thanks. And she's like giving me a thumbs up or whatever. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> May the odds be ever in your favor. Solidarity, sister. Oh, we, were, we were laughing. I was like, I was like, I don't know why I'm even doing like trying to negotiate with trying the Trying to toddler. negotiate <laughs> with the three-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like negotiate the terrorists. It's just not gonna you're not gonna get anywhere. Like no, no, absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. Well, Amy is at a breaking point, which I totally get and says, let's go. I can't do this. Let's pack up the food. So mm-hmm. can't enjoy your sushi. Sometimes milk, that happens. You know? <laughs> Gotta go. Everybody's being disturbed in the restaurant. Uh we cut back to the hospital, and Dr. Smith comes into the room to tell Amanda that everything went well with Misty's surgery. And it's then revealed, Amanda said, it's been seven years since her bariatric surgery. And like you said earlier, Dr. Smith uh, was worried about scar tissue or just the unknown since he hadn't done Amanda's surgery. He really didn't know what he was going to find until he went in there. Mm -hmm. So it was more complex. Right. So it took a little bit longer, but ultimately they both came out of their surgery. It was just fine. Mm hmm. Uh. When we see Amy give uh, her niece and nephew Gage and they're starting to leave or whatever, uh, Amy starts crying and saying her son is missing his daddy and she just wants to go home. Uh, Tammy starts making jokes to like with her and okay. she says she's 
Yeah. But before you get there, like, okay, Gage is not missing his daddy. Right. Or he never does anything with him. He's just being a kid. He's just being a toddler running around screaming overtired. Like, he's not missing his daddy. He doesn't know his daddy, barely. Right? I'm just probably saying. is. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, Tammy starts making jokes and says that she's good at making Amy laugh when she's upset. And she did. Amy's like crying, mm-hmm. laughing. Uh, but before they leave, they have to do, they have to drink the quail egg they or eat it, whatever you say, yeah. <laughs> out of their martini glasses. So you can imagine both of them have these martini glasses with this dark liquid. I it's, Honestly, I've never had a quail egg like that. I, I'm assuming I've, it's I've never. I don't know if I've ever had a quail egg. I don't think. If I, I have, have, it didn't look like that. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't think I have either. But when they eat it or drink it, whatever you want to say, uh, Tammy seemed fine. And Amy was like gagging and ran to the bathroom. So I'm like, yeah. well, okay. Yeah. that Yeah. All right. Then after that, we see Amy and Tammy in the rage room. Amy looked super mad yelling, fuck you, Michael, playing your video game. <laughs> so oh, I'm not my God. I died. <laughs> I died. Play your fucking video games. I actually recorded that so that I, if I ever, like, if I blow up at, like, how do life made when he's playing his video games, I'll just send him that clip. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, how do life made in your video games? Video games. Oh, man. So we were talking about this rage room. You were like, do you, you, you were like, we should go to a rage room. And you're like, I'm I down. Do damage at a rage room. And I was talking with, like, Melissa and Natasha and stuff. We were talking, like, some, maybe, like, one of them was saying how the rage reminds her too much of her like childhood home. So that would not be therapeutic for her. Right. To be and that's in, fair. Absolutely. In an anger environment like that would not be a therapeutic treatment for her because it reminds her too much of her like childhood home. Totally get that. I'm like, okay, I get that. I'm like, anger isn't generally my emotion either. So like I, it's rage room isn't like on the top of my list of things. I mean, I'll go do it because why the hell not? It'd be fun. Um, I would like the opposite of the the when you and I were talking about these too, the float chamber things, Ooh, like the yeah. sensory deprivation float room things, float things, pods or whatever. Like, and those two are like couldn't be more opposite ends of the emotional spectrum. <laughs> like, here's let's shut off all emotions, and here let's dial them all up to a thousand. Um. So I think we need to do both. I'm down. Know, that I sounds like us. Starting with a rage room and then ending with the float. So like in Chinese medicine and like what I do with acupuncture, it's so important to move emotions out. Mm-hmm. Now, whether it be a rage room, exercise, whatever, but holding on to things makes you sick. So yes. it's like so great to see Amy breaking down crying and like this is the time where I'm like wow she is releasing some shit because she, she raged the Ooh. fuck out of that room and started hit like hysterically crying and I was like that's it that's what you need she needs you need that release that mm-hmm. really yeah so um I was so glad to see that happen yeah. um and then she needs a float after that <laughs> yeah. she, she needs a float <laughs> yeah <laughs> get him out and yeah but um, I'm so tired that I don't even think I'd be like efficient at a rage room. I would probably just do like a Tammy and sit in a chair. And you need to like life. rest up for a week. You need like a week of no kid so that you could have the energy for a rage room. I'd probably pull a muscle in a rage room. Like I'd probably like throw something and hurt my pull my back out or some shit. Like I, <laughs> that's what I would I'm do. Like, Fuck you, baby daddy. Oh my god, my back. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm back. Out. I'm old. I can't handle this. Fuck you and your fucking video games. Oh my back. Oh my back. <laughs> if I sleep with the wrong pillow, I hurt my back and need like physical therapy for a week. Come on now. My luck, I'd break some glass. The shit would go in my eye somehow. And it yeah, would right? bypass the, the face shield and I'd, I'd end up in the ER. I don't know. I just have so somehow <laughs> you would. I feel like the one percent chance that something bad happens. <laughs> Oh, wow. Amy says she fought tooth and nail for her babies. And she said that everything is falling apart. She doesn't know where it went wrong. But I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, if you fought yourself. She did. She's been fighting. Like what I got from her on this scene was like, she's been fighting her whole life to get like, to be better, to have better than what she had. And she wanted a family you know, a good together family, you know, nuclear family, the whole deal or whatever, which is not what she had growing up. So she's trying to get better. Right. 
and have better. So she she gets married and she has you know weight loss surgery and then she has kids and she's like, oh, I have it all. No, and then it turns out you actually don't. It's all yeah. an illusion. But because Michael's a piece of shit, um, but it's not. You know what I mean? Like, and I think it went wrong when she even said it. She's like, I've been fighting tooth and nail. I've been so mm-hmm. I, not we. Mm-hmm. So. I, I'm looking back on I'm like it went wrong when you were the only one fighting for these things yeah. it sounds like you that's have a family when it's just you right and you Michael know? seemed like he was just like oh like you going have to along have, with the be a team effort yeah otherwise what's the point yeah and Tammy says she doesn't feel like she's doing enough which I think Tammy has grown so much and is really yeah, trying it seems like she really is trying and she cares yeah, and she just, I think she feels bad because she can't run after the kids. And so Amy's always running after the kids. So physically, it looks like she's not doing as much as maybe she wants to be doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, you know, her being there and helping and doing what she can, like Amy yeah. bring her the baby in the morning and go tend to the other one, you know. Well, like you have a kid, everyone listening, I'm sure like a lot of people listening right now have kids. Just having somebody hold your baby and feed them a bottle. Yes, gives you 10 minutes to shower it gives yes. you you know just like it, it, just that act alone yeah. is just super helpful as as minimal as it seems to and maybe the emotional the, the emotional component of knowing that you have a partner who can do that takes a lot of load off of you as well so if amy can wake up and know that she can get gage go get gage bring him or glenn i guess is the baby go get glenn bring them in, give them to Tammy, Tammy gave me the bottle, and then she can go and deal with with the other one um, and not have to worry about the the first one. Like that alone, just like the mental load that that takes off of you too, on, on top of the physical load of doing it, I think. Definitely. Um, we see Misty and Amanda in recovery the next day after surgery, and they're sharing the same room. Uh, getting ready to go home and dr smith walks in and i'm like oh but before he walks in they're talking about like how easy on the eyes he is <laughs> and uh you know the and like they're joking about like the whole doctor patient thing and amanda's like ethnically he would get in trouble and i'm like oh my god Jesus. ethnically no 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 sweetheart ethically <laughs> i love them they're funny mm-hmm. um, He's got a nice little body. <laughs> I mean, he, he, is a, he, he is an attractive man. I'll give him he's that. He's handsome. And he seems so nice. He's nice, yes. Yeah. If well, we talk looked, to him, he's nice. Yeah. He says they both look really good post-op, and he's going to send them home. So that's good, especially because, you know, worrying about uh, Misty, and he'll see him in a week. So they yeah. both look good. Yeah. All right, we move on to Amy at the lawyer's office. She says she wants to file for divorce so she can move on. And then we see 35 minutes later, she comes running out of the lawyer's office saying she did, things did not go as planned. And she's obviously very angry. So We're producers angry are like upset. Yeah, this is what we had a discussion last week. What could this be for? And yeah, right. <laughs> what was that, <laughs> Katrina? You were right. You were <laughs> <No>. right. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm very, uh, I, I'm sorry. I'm an Aries, guys. I like to be right. She sorry. Right. <laughs> no, but it's funny. <laughs> um, she told Lexi Purdue, was right. <laughs> oh, that feels so good. <laughs> I'm, <deeply. laughs> I'm not kidding. But um, <laughs> <laughs> happy Friday. Uh, Lexi's right. right. <laughs> oh. The episode, the one, it's like the friends, you know how friends names their episodes, the one where blah, blah, blah. This is, this is the episode, the one where Lexi's right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to rename it. Let's edit out the, no, yeah. I'm kidding. Um, she told producer she didn't want to talk about it, but then in her other interview later on, she says that Michael filed for divorce first and beat her to the punch. And she's like, I can't be mad at that because she's the one who, you know, she's like, I'm asked the one who for. asked for it. But damn, are you not going to fight for me and try to win me back and just throw our marriage away? Yeah, I get it. I get it. So, yeah, like from a legal perspective, I was like, if he files first, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter from a legal perspective. Like, and that's where I was last week. I was like, if that's what the reason is, like, whatever the fuck, it doesn't matter from a legal perspective. And that's how I was looking at it. But then she was talking about this from an emotional perspective. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right, I'll bring the, my, my emotional side. I get it. She 
didn't expect him to initiate a divorce and right. that emotionally kind of crushed her because she was like uh the fuck you're yeah. not even gonna try you're not even gonna like ask me to come back like what so i get it i get it mm-hmm. i'm the same way it's like you know something's not good for you but you at least want to think that there's you know the person wants to be with you and especially in a marriage like that with two kids like yeah you you know they've been together for a while so and she's yeah I she's gonna, i mean she's going to deal with all of the emotions of the you know failure and rejection and all the things you go through when you're getting divorced ask me i've done it twice you know, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know. third one's a charm katrina third one's a charm so far it is <laughs> how are our life mates editing this going oh my god <laughs> uh, yeah so that's the well, end of that, that episode reminds me. yeah i think is it tomorrow tomorrow is our anniversary of our oh. first date oh that might be date. tomorrow might be our, the anniversary of our first date oh it would be eight years yeah that's so cute. Or was it yesterday? I can't remember if it was the 4th or the 6th. I'll have to look. <laughs> but the first week of January of 2016 is when we had our first date. Oh, that's so adorable. So, yeah. And here we are eight years later. Oh, you said 2016. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so I met him um, shortly after I got sober. So those two numbers track for me, right? Like I got so my, my sobriety date is 2000, October, 2015. And then I met him January of 2016. Oh, so I had, I know I recently hit eight years of recovery. So now he and I are hitting eight years of being together. What's those are great milestones, right? But you know, just close together and, and my birthday is right by my uh, sobriety date too so you know yeah well i don't know anyway that's cool the things are a lot different this marriage <laughs> I wasn't yeah. so my other ones anyway <laughs> we don't need to get into all of that back to the matter is i'm happy and it's uh, uh, just about our anniversary so i'm very happy yeah anyway and then next time we see chris and tammy going to see caleb after being away from each other for two months and K Tammy says she just feels like Caleb is hiding something, but we don't we don't know, obviously. And then Amy says she doesn't want to see Michael, but she knows it has to be done. It looks like she's walking into the courtroom. Is that what you got from that? Maybe meeting him for yeah, maybe, mediation or something? Maybe yeah, a lawyer's perhaps, office for yeah. mediation? Yeah, there's so. there's usually in, in family court stuff. I don't know Kentucky specifically and family court stuff is state specific, but Generally, you're going to go through um, at least an attempt at mediation before you go. Actually, if there's going to be a trial, like the way that the divorce, if you if you're not going to agree, or if there's kids and real property involved, which they have real property being like houses, real estate, things like that. Um, so they have a house that they bought, and they have two kids and stuff. So there there's generally going to be some kind of either mandated or um, voluntary mediation process to try to resolve as much things as possible before going into court, if you have to at all for have a judge resolve that stuff. So. Yeah. So maybe good episode next week with her seeing yeah. Michael for the first time. A lot of, not a lot happened this time for us. So very short episode for you today, but Hey, you know what? It's Friday. Um, but um yeah, so um, we are going to get you some Sister Wives stuff because the Sister Wives episodes that they've been showing are these look backs and talk backs and things like that. I'm not entirely sure what they all are because we get episodes on Fridays and we're getting episodes on Sundays and I'm not sure because of the holidays what was going on. But they're still showing episodes after the one-on-ones. They're showing these, like them looking back at other episodes and this stuff is fucking phenomenal. I so, haven't seen it. You haven't seen any of them? No. Oh my god! Okay, go. Yes, watch it. They're they're good, but they're okay. okay. You have to record them because they're not showing up on the like the Max Discovery app. You have to like record it. It's so oh. weird. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. Like if you go to the app after the fact, like and you're like, okay, let me go see the episodes. These episodes aren't showing up. There's some that are, but these ones aren't. So I don't know. It's very strange. Is that is that going on with Sister Wives too? Because I saw people online saying that that's they what can't I mean. see. That's, we're talking about Sister Wives. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I thought you were saying 
I zoned out. Thousand Pound Sisters, sisters. Looking back at the episodes. Oh no, no, Sister Wives. Sorry, Sisters. I keep thinking Sisters. All the sisters. Is thousand Pound. There's too many sisters, guys. We yes. need like brothers or something. We need a different show. I don't know. So that's weird, though. I wonder why that's happening. Why they're not? I've watched like the first two. Um, yeah, and I, 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 I've not, I've watched some of them. I just don't know, like, what, like, are there, how many of them there are, and is this like a continuation of the season? Like, I can't figure it all out because it's not recording all of them for me, and I have to happen to catch some of them. So I'm trying to figure it out. I don't know, but it's TLC. They never make it all sense to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Amen to we're going to try to watch some of that stuff and get that to you too as well. Um, and I think that's it. That's all we got. Bye. Okay, bye.